Welcome back to Houston Life. If you've driven down I-10 in Katy recently, you may have noticed there's a big top tent in the parking lot of Katy Mills Mall. Well, that's the tent for a show called Paranormal Cirque. That is right. It's a trio of fun, circus theater and cabaret, and then a mix in a dark world of scary illusions and mysterious creatures. Yeah, Mel Camp is joining us live now with a preview of the show. Okay. Mel, before the break, that yes, motorcycle yeah. was, uh, was kind of scary. Oh Jeez, my goodness, God. you're live on television. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> He's one of the spook actors, and oh my goodness, that big top that you were talking about, Derek, we are under the big top right now. And this is general manager of Paranormal Cirque, Ben Holland. Ben, thanks for having us here. Absolutely, thanks so much for coming. We appreciate you guys making it out, and hopefully everybody watching at home right now can come out and see us right here very soon. Well, we're gonna give you a little sneak peek of how amazing this show is. I mean, you can hear the motorcycle revving behind. That has something to do with what's about to happen. <laughs> Okay. All right. This is what Paranormal Cirque is all about. Now I get it. I just met someone before who's one of the spook actors, and she said, yeah, audience members are getting scared all the time. I need to sit down. <laughs> She's OK. She's oh, my okay. God. OK. <laughs> So that's what it's about, right? That's what it's about. It's about, you know, taking all the things you normally think of when you think of a circus. We got the crazy acrobats, we got daredevils, we got comedy, we have stunts, we have all that, but then the, plus that little extra element of, you know, scary, spooky Halloween and people jumping out and revving chainsaws at you all over the And place. you're one of the performers as well. I'm still shaking. Okay, that's the motorcycle. I thought that was a chainsaw. You can do some pretty cool stuff yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. you pop. Oh, yeah. Watch this. Ah! <laughs> Not just scary, not just scary, but also creepy. That's what Paranormal Cirque is all about. And are you ready to see one of the death-defying stunts that you'll get to see if you come see the show tonight? It's amazing. Or any day. Any until day. Until January 29th. Yeah, we have here uh, okay. the Acrobats from Mexico. They're going to take away. Good. Ah! Oh, God. <laughs> She's hanging. Well, I think Mel Camp has uh, safely recovered from the little chainsaw incident moments ago. I don't know. Oh, He's still God. out of breath. Could you believe what the guy just did oh, with his, his arms? arms? Oh, my God. I can't get over that. Okay, <laughs> How Mel. do you find out you can do that? I don't know, but apparently he, he did. <laughs> Mel Camp, have fun out there. Parrot normal Cirque, so check it out. Only yeah. in town for a short time. Wow. All right, you guys. Well, he's a Houston-based model who recently spiked, uh, spiced things up as a contestant on season four of Netflix's global hit, Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, after the break, we're chatting with Sean Wells about his quest to find love on this sizzling dating show. I cannot wait to hear <laughs> what this was like. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back.
Hot to Handle on Netflix is a popular dating show where 10 sexy singles mingle on an island in the Caribbean, but they must resist temptation with the hopes of making a connection and winning prize money. Mm, and on the latest season, a Houston-based model made it just in time to shake things up in the competition. He is Sean Wells, and he joins us now to tell us why he decided to search for love on the show. Yes. I'm just going to put this out there, Sean. <laughs> I don't up? think you need a reality <laughs> Probably show. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So why'd you join? I joined it just because it was just a social experiment. I wanted to try something new, um, and I think it was just a good time in general, honestly. Yeah. On these reality shows people really put themselves out there right you're wearing a swimsuit right. there you know people like know your business right did you ever hesitate or worry going into a show like this oh my gosh like <sighs> people are gonna know everything about me right right I'm kind of like more of a private person so doing something like this was outgoing for me and I was worried about it but it end up not being too bad, so. What kind of a process is it, though, when you do a show like mm -hmm. this? They they obviously, you know you're gonna be on the beach, you know right, you're gonna right, have to be. Right. What kind of process is that to go through? Uh, it's, a, it's a different process, because you fly out to this, uh, Turks and Caicos is where we filmed it. Oh, beautiful. I know, it was like a vacation every wow. day. Yeah. But every day was like a vacation, but you're filming. Right. And you're also getting to learn new people, so. I don't know, it was just different, you know? Yeah. And how long did shooting take place? A month. So a full month, you're yeah. out there, you're surrounded by cameras, right. and in the meantime, uh, you've been a Houstonian for about a year, mm -hmm. moved here from Jacksonville, Florida, yes. is that right? Yes, And so you kind of had to put your modeling career on hold. Right, yeah, I mean, I had to go out there for a month, and I didn't really know when the show was coming out either. We thought it was coming out in the summer. It ended up coming out in uh, December. So this whole time I thought it was canceled. Oh. Yeah. And then they're like, surprise! Surprise, you know, Netflix does what it wants to do. <laughs> but yeah, I had to put everything on hold uh, while just waiting to see what the show is going to do, honestly. We were just chatting a little bit briefly about, you know, your next step. You did this show. Mm -hmm. Did you get bit by the reality bug? Do you want to continue with reality TV? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I could see myself doing something like you guys are doing, actually. Just hosting or being like an anchor or something would be great as well. But, um... Whatever comes, whatever God brings is just fine with me, too. It's always interesting after we've had several uh, reality show contestants here on Houston Life, mm -hmm. and some people, th they're hungry for more, and other right. people say, never again. Yes. Would yeah. you be open to doing another reality sh show? Like a love show? Sure. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it was more adventurous or something like that. I don't know about in the house thing, but if it was like more like adventurous, maybe so. It would be fun. I got you. Yeah. you like, I could see like the challenge or some kind of physical The challenge would be great, yeah. Like the that. challenge would be great, yeah. So who did you really get along with on the show? And Okay. Um, so my... You better be real. <laughs> you better tell us the truth. I got along with everybody, but I ended up getting closer with Jawa. That was the woman that I ended up falling for. But uh, everybody was great on the cast. To the production, cast, everybody was fine. When you do a show like this, I know that there are a lot of secrets that after you finish filming, mm -hmm. you cannot tell anybody what went down, right? Right. And you just mentioned you hadn't heard anything, you wondered maybe if the show was canceled. Right. You gotta tell us what this was like when you were able to mm -hmm. see these episodes right. for the very first time. What was going through <laughs> your mind? <sighs> and were there any like cringe moments where you were like, oh my gosh, I forgot that happened? The show's so cringy, I haven't seen the show yet. Oh, hold on. You haven't even seen it? I don't, haven't seen it. Wait, I've seen Sean, the clips, but I haven't seen the show. You have not no. watched this show? No. So you made a conscious decision th that you would not tune into this. Mm -mm. I, I, I saw myself and it's just so odd. And then I couldn't watch it. So I haven't seen the show. But I heard it's good. And no. <laughs> so you have no plans. Do you have no plans to watch this show? Not right now. No. Why did you use the word cringy? <laughs> I don't think it's cringy. Why do you think it's cringy? I don't know. I don't know. It's just seeing myself is just yeah. odd. I don't know. But um, I, everybody tells me it's a good show. And I, I, I played a good character. I know I did. But I just haven't watched it yet watched uh, it. one day but though. you've heard it's good though <laughs> i heard it's good I, I heard it's good hey can we just chat about dating as well because this is a topic that comes up on houston life all right, the time right. it seems like young people they are getting married and not not just seems like it mm -hmm. but young people are getting married later in yes. life they're right. not like a previous generation right. that would rush to get right. married mm -hmm. is there anything you are looking for in a partner or or did you truly believe that this experience was going to help you get closer to finding love uh, it was a possibility because everything is so like, calculated that what they do with the show um but i I thought maybe it was a possibility that I could find love. Um, and I, I do see people getting married later. And I think it's because of social media, honestly. It makes things harder in a way.
What do you mean? I think it's just because our generation has so many options and it's hard for somebody to just settle down and be complacent with one person when it's so many options on your phone. You get that for something, the grass is always hotter, greener. But yes. That's what everybody believes. Yes. And yes. it's always somebody hotter and better and you're just strolling and yeah, I think it's social media to play a big role in that. Well, 25 years old, Sean Wells, thank you so much for yes, stopping sir. by. One day, if you ever watch your own show, you gotta let us know <laughs> how binge it turns watch, out. Binge watch. Okay, okay, we'll have to watch. It. Yes, yes. God, thank you so much. A reminder to our viewers, Too Hot to Handle Season 4 is streaming now on Netflix. So uh, check it out and tell Sean how it ends. I'm going to send you a review, Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Coming up after the break, a look at what is happening on tomorrow's show. And more, lo more local news stories are streaming right now on the KPRC 2 Plus live stream. Yeah, you can watch by downloading the free KPRC 2 Plus app on your smart TV or streaming device. And now also available available on your mobile phone. Just search KPRC2 Plus wherever you get your apps. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, Army veteran, Paralympian athlete, and Olympic gold medalist Carrie Miller Ortiz joins us in Studio B. The local hero is being honored at this year's Houston Sports Awards. We're going to chat with her about her ongoing work supporting athletes within the Paralympic community. Sounds great. And a Houston based doula and maternity expert joins us with the four of the coolest baby products that are on the market. Plus, she will talk about baby safety. Okay, very nice. Well, Lauren Kelly, we had some fun today on Houston Life. I feel like now we have sort of booked everyone's weekend calendars, huh? Yeah, we've been throwing things out there left and right. Tons of stuff to do. Lunar New Year, yep. and mark your calendars again uh, at Sawyer Yards there for that fundraiser for the fire at Winter Street Studios. Happens yep. Saturday morning from 11 to 3. Girlfriend's Giggle next month and Paranormal Cirque. All Paranormal time. Cirque and Cirque du Soleil is coming yes. later this month as well. Yes. My goodness, too hot to handle on Netflix. Watch it. We'll see you tomorrow.